Oscar from 85 on scene, Floyd Avenue. All right, Debs. Yeah, damage only. We're lucky though, Karen, you just missed him. So what happened? Not too sure, but you can smell his breath from here. What, well, this time in the morning? Out all night, I should think. Yeah. This lady was walking to the shop with her daughter, heard the car skidding and stopped. Well, lucky she did. Yeah. Hey, you two, come away from those broken glass. Do you know me then, Debs? Yeah, can you get the lady's part? Yeah, sure. Come on, what's the glass? Hello there, how are you doing? Is there anything I can do? Tanya, are you all right? <laughs> What about Melissa? Everyone's fine, yeah. sir. Where is he? Oi, oi, hang about, hang about, come here. What do you think you're doing? What I'm doing, my friend, is sorting things out. Is he pissed? Well, if he is, we'll deal with it, all right? Now, just calm down. You okay, Nick? Yeah, I think so. All right, can I let you go now? Yeah. Sierra Oscar from 561, receiving. 561 ahead. Yeah, can we have a vehicle check for this RTA in Floyd Avenue? Yeah, go ahead with the details. Juliet 503, Yankee Whiskey November. Can you wait one, Sarge? I'll tell you when you can speak. What? Look, um, your daughter's still very upset, so why don't you go over and try and cheer her up, eh? Right. What are you doing? The registered keeper. If he lives local and that bloke hears his address, what do you think might happen? What do I think? I think you're trying to tell me how to do my job. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm just trying to avoid any problems. Sarah Oscar from 408. You can go ahead with that PNC check now, Sarge. On Juliet 503, Yankee Whiskey, November. Thank you. No, thank you. It's showing us a red Austin Mini. No reports. Register keeper is a Mr. Stephen Banks. Flat 3, 24 Floyd Avenue. Over. All received. You see? He lives just down the end of the road. Lucky I stopped you when I did. No naked flames. He's well over the limit. Do you want the van for him? Uh, no, we'll take him. What about a tireway? That doesn't look drivable. No, I think you're right. Leave it to me. Oh, aren't you fantastic? Sorry? Mr. Perfect. The ultimate policing machine. What, you think you got stripes or something? No. But just because you're after SO10, you think you're better than the rest of us? That's not true. Isn't it? No, it isn't. It's... Oh, just leave me alone. Debbie! Women, eh? Can't live with them. I'll get the tie away. Steve, did you want me? Yes, sir. I was just wondering if you got my application for annual leave. Oh, I got it, but I'm afraid I'll have to turn it down. Sir? Well, next week's going to be very tricky without Nick Slater. If I let you have a holiday, we'll be below minimum strength. Well, sir, I haven't had any leave for six months, and with the shift changes, I really need a break. Well, I'm very sorry. Try and see it from my point of view. Yeah. What's up? He's just turned me down for some annual leave. When for? Next week. Oh, I was going to ask for a couple of days then. Well, don't bother. Thanks to Nick Slater, you got no chance. I'm knackered. Aren't we all? Apart from Slater, of course. I've had enough of this. Yeah, you and me both. Debbie. Debbie, hang about. What do you want? You going to rest? Why? Am I too early? I mean, if you want me to wait till 10, then obviously I'll turn around and get back on my beat. You're in charge, after all. I don't know what's got into you today. I don't know what you mean. And I don't know what I've done, but whatever it is, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah? Yeah, look, I've only got a couple of days left here. I don't want to leave you like this. Like what? Like this. Debbie, look, can't we talk? 408 from Sarah Oscar receiving. <laughs> yeah, go ahead, Sarge. Can you take some paperwork from the CJU to the Crown Court, please, Nick? Yeah, I can, but I'm on refs at 9.30. Not anymore, you're not. This is urgent. What do you think that was all about, then? What? Nick and Debbie, that row. Well, I wouldn't call it a row. Tiff, then. Lovers, Tiff. Wouldn't call it that, either, seeing as they're not lovers. Well, not yet, no. Meaning? Well, it's got to be on the cards, isn't it? Those two doing it before he goes. Do you know, George, I haven't given it a lot of thought. <laughs> Debbie, have you got a minute? I'm busy. Pull up the seat, Nick. I can't really, Sarge. I'm in the middle of something. Can I meet you somewhere later, then? I have no idea where I'll be. Well, I'll give you a shout, then. You can do what you like. Oh, come on. Look, I'll tell you what. What? How about... 
How about we go out for dinner tonight? I'm sorry? Do you want to go out to dinner tonight? Dinner? With you? Just you? Well, who else do you want? Okay. But I'll choose the restaurant. Don't want garlic bread and salad bar. Uh, he doesn't care what happens to us now. Well, he's only interested in his new job. The rest of us can go to hell. All right, lads. What's happening? Don't ask. You coming? Yeah, hurry up, George. You're wasting valuable drinking time. No, I'm going to be here till about six. I've got a bit of Fed rep business to attend to. Fed rep? Is that you? I'd forgotten. I'll tell you what you should attend to. Nick Slater. Yeah, you could do it a good scene, too. <laughs> yeah, well, I think he's going to get it. Hey? Him and Debbie are going out for dinner tonight. Will the evening end up in the restaurant? I don't think so. Debbie and Slater are having dinner tonight? Yeah. I reckon they're going to end up in bed as well. In what? Yeah. Nice relaxed candlelit dinner and then uh, back to the section house for... Nah. Well, what? What? You want to bet? Oh, I'll happily bet you both £10 that Nick ends up making the beast with two backs by the end of the night. Him and Debbie? <laughs> well, he's not going to do it on his own, is he, Dave? <laughs> I don't know. I'll see you for 20 quid. Well, score? Yeah, 20 quid says they do not sleep together in the section house tonight. And how will you know? Oh, George and me. We'll check. On the hour, every hour. We'll listen by the door. All right, then you're on. You are two very sad men, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Somewhere expensive. If he's paying, I want to get me money's worth. I do know of a place. What's it called? Not too far. No, no, this is at Sun Hill. Narika went there. She said it was really nice. Marcel's Morsels, that's it. <laughs> I'm sorry? No, that's what it's called. Very exclusive, very expensive. Marcel's Morsels? Where is it? Well, I don't know, but you'll have to book a table. Said it was really so, where's it going to be? The cotton crown or the scales? Neither. We're going to Marcel's Morsels. What's that? Wine bar? That's an exclusive restaurant where Nick's having dinner with Debbie. Well, he won't like it if we turn up, will he? No, he won't. This one. No, too posh. No, I wouldn't. You don't want Nick getting the wrong idea, do you? No, I do not. So what's this all about then? It's just dinner. So why all the fuss? Oh, I want to look nice. What for Nick? For myself. Has he ever asked you out before? Only when he's had ten pints of lager. I wonder what he's after tonight then. Beats me. He can't still think I might be interested, can he? Well, he's a man. Anything's possible. Yeah. Well, I've lost track of the amount of times I've told him I don't fancy him. Well, if you turn up in this little red number, he'll think you've changed your mind. He probably thinks his new job makes him more attractive, like James Bond. Hmm. Well, he's going to find I'm Dr. No. Hmm. That blue trouser suit. Yeah. yeah. Are you the manager? Uh, the maitre d'. Well, that's close enough. Detective Constable Larwood. Uh, Detective Sergeant O'Farrell. Someone Hill, CRD. Oh, uh, hello. Have you got a minute? Uh, well, I've got ten, quite literally. Uh, Trevor, can you refresh these orchids? Thank you. Um, what seems to be the problem? Well, the problem, sir, is a man by the name of Nicholas Slater. He's working his way around the most expensive restaurants in town, eating expensive meals and making off without payment. We want to arrest him for criminal deception. But basically, we need to catch him in the act. We have reason to believe that he's eating here, tonight. Here? Yes. Has he made a reservation? Slater. Uh, right, for what time? Uh, we don't have that information. Um, no, sorry, uh, no Slater. Uh, what about Keane? That's one of his aliases. You're spelling that, huh? K-E-A-N-E. -E. Uh, yes, uh, table for 2, 7.30, Keane. Right, OK. This is what we want. Go along with the scam until the suspect goes to leave the restaurant. He'll probably pretend to get a phone call and then he'll walk out as though he's got something urgent to attend to. He'll leave his companion at the table. Don't worry about her. She's an innocent party. You concentrate on the man. We need your help arresting him. Arresting him? We can't risk him seeing us. We've got our undercover status to preserve. So what we want you to do is you and some of your waiters to grab him as soon as he's out on the pavement. You can be as rough as it's necessary, obviously. Got any big lads here? Well, a couple of the lads work out, um, so I believe. Um, Trevor, 
Going to need your help. And you'll need some uniform officers to actually make the arrest. So, if you dial 999 as soon as you've got them on the ground. Is it okay if I wait in the kitchen till it goes off? Well, as long as Chef doesn't mind. Sure, you can sweet talk him? And if you could let him have a table by the window so we can observe him. Oh, oh, and there's one other thing you should be aware of. What? Slater has a habit of pretending to be a police officer. <laughs> yeah, I know. So if he tries that one on, just ignore him. Ah, now, hang on a minute. How do I know you two are really police officers? Well, you can phone Sunhill Station. The number's in the book. Ask for extension 5046. That'll put you through to our governor. Your governor? Detective Inspector. He'll confirm who we are. OK, well, I I I'll, I'll do that. Uh, extension 5046. Right. Um, Trevor? Wait here, please. It's amazing what some people will swallow. Yeah, yeah, it's me. You should be expecting that call any moment. <clears throat> Hello, CID? Yes, yes, D.I. Turnbull speaking. How can I help you? Um, yes, yes, that's right. Yes. Yes, um, yes, I can confirm who they say they are. They're very good boys, too. I said they are who they say they are. Right, yeah, thank you. Thank you, goodbye. Still here, George? Federation business, Serge. Oh dear. Who are you? <laughs> Oi, what's the joke? You won't believe what Dave's up to. Try me. Look, I'll tell you outside. In fact, you can come with me if you like. Fancy a pint? Yeah, just a bit. What name did you book it under? Mine. <clears throat> Good evening, sir, madam. Hello there. Um, we've booked a table. Certainly, sir. Under what name? A Keen. This way, please. I'll send a waiter over to look after you. Well, it's not very intimate, is it? I'm glad to say. We could go and sit over there. Nick, you're not on assignment now. Something to drink, sir. Yes, we'd like a bottle of your best champagne, to start with. That's That's point of that, <laughs> I can't believe you've done all this. Well, it'll be perfect. He won't know what's at him. No, hold on, have you done this just to make sure you win the bet? No. What bet? George reckons Nick's going to get Debbie into bed tonight. <laughs> yeah, well, I didn't know all this was planned, did I? So, bet's off, OK? No, it's not. He put 20 quid on Nick getting his leg over. We well, lost that, George. And if I couldn't get her into... Hey? Did you try? Yeah, well, I tested the water, didn't I? What, she told you to shove off? It's her loss, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think we ordered the wrong starter? Well, at least we'll have room for pudding. And the cheese board. What do I, uh, use? Try a teaspoon. I hate it when they put the bottle out of reach. No, I don't think this is real champagne. Do you see the label? No, but it tastes all right to me. And when they finish their puddings, Rod's going to give Nick a bell. Are you sure Nick's got his mobile on him? He never leaves home without it. Anyway, Rod's going to tell him he's got a suspect needs identifying. What suspect? This bloke this morning got really upset when his girlfriend and kid nearly got run over. Anyway, Nick took his powers, got a good look at him. I'll tell Nick a bloke's been arrested for assaulting the driver involved, but he won't give his name. And can Nick pop out and take a look? Clever, eh? Yeah, I suppose. Got your money ready, George? Yeah, what happens if Debbie gets stuck in, though, eh? Perhaps she won't get a chance, because I'm going to be pushing her out the back door. <laughs> but Nick's word against the waiters. And they've been told not to mention us to the arresting officers. He'll be surprised to see pieces. <laughs> <laughs> but duty bound to place him under arrest. <laughs> a perfect end to a perfect evening. So you're going to tell me, then? What? What this morning was all about. 
It was about you treating me like a probationer. Behaving as if you'd just been promoted. I think you're blowing it all out of proportion. Do you now? I need to go to the gents. Where is it? Ask one of them. They're very attentive all of a sudden. All right, lads. See us, Fennel. Have they ordered their sweets yet? Uh, their puddings, yes. Uh, right, Malcolm, give me a half portion of the tart to town, please, and a few summer berries in a small bowl. Thank, Thank you. Have you been serving them half portions all night? Well, if we're not going to get their money, why should they get our food? <laughs> Fair enough. Right, is it all right if I just wait over here? Uh, yeah, you're going to have to wait to one side. Table Thank six, you. please. Uh, yeah, uh, Malcolm, table six there. Thank you. Right. Not long now. Tell your men to stand by. Right. Not knowing when I'll be back, it's, it's going to be hard, obviously. Have but... you been here before? No, I told you. Then why are you attracting so much attention? I don't know. Maybe there's something funny going on. <laughs> like what? Who's the tart? Her name's Debbie. <laughs> um, that's for me, thanks. Sorry. I'm sure it's very important. The fact that I haven't got a mobile simply goes to show how significant I am compared to you. Hello? Rod, what's up? What, you mean now? Yeah, well, I'm in a restaurant in Purchase Gardens. Marcel's Morsels. All right, then. Yeah, I'll keep an eye out for you. Cheers. And what did the lovely Rodney want? He's got someone he wants me to look at. I'll pull into somewhere where it's dark. And as soon as the waiters grab him, you put your foot down, right? Don't worry. You'll be miles away by the time the uniform arrives. You finished packing yet? Yeah. Taking down your naughty posters? I thought I'd give them to Reg. Do you know where you're going? I can't really say. Silly me for asking. Look, that's what I wanted to talk to you about, Debs. About where I'm going. Look, Al. Here's Rodney. In his own car. I thought you said he was night duty. Well, yeah, that's what he said. What's he waiting for? On your horn. No, no, he's definitely seen me. He'd be in a pool car, wouldn't he? Give Sonny a ring, check his story. Well, why would he be lying? Well, I don't know, just, just ring the Nick Nick. <sighs> oh, this is stupid. I, I can just ask Rod what's happening. Right, go, go, go. But don't touch him till he's outside. Rod? No, he went home hours ago. Why? No reason. Thanks, Liz. Bye. You know, I think you are right, Debs. There is something funny going on. Those waiters looked about ready to jump me. I reckon Rod is playing some kind of prank. Hello? Nick! Nick, what's keeping you? Yeah, listen, Nick, I can't explain. I'm not going to. Hey, what are you doing? We've been rumbled. I don't understand. I think I can guess what he was up to. What's going on? I don't know. Well, should we arrest him at the table? No, no. I'll, um, I'll contact the rest of my team. Rod was trying it on. I made it quite clear I wasn't interested. I said it was because we were both in the job. So? So if he hears about us going out together, he might think that I was lying about not wanting to date another copper. A date? Is, is that what you think this is? Well, isn't it? Uh, it's all gone pear-shaped. What's that supposed to mean? Well, it's a technical term. Basically, it means the wheels have come off. Yeah, yeah, I, I don't understand what you're saying. Well, I'll, I'll show it as an NCPA and the IRB. I can't be any clearer than that. Sorry, what did you say your name was? That's exactly the point I'm making. What with everyone listening all the time at the Nick? 
I suddenly thought we're not going to have a chance for a proper talk before I leave. Yeah, but a talk about what? Not us. Well, in a way, yeah. I mean, I know you're not interested in me as a boyfriend, and that's fine. Is it? Well, I know when I'm flogging a dead horse, Debbie. But I'm worried about what happens when I leave. If things start going wrong, if I make a balls up of everything, I want to be sure that I've got one friend that I can always come back to. A friend? Yeah, that's all. Might not sound like much, but it's important to me. I want to be able to call you up whenever I want to and not get grief because I haven't been in touch for ages. And can I come and visit you, no matter who you're going out with? Is that asking too much? No, Nick. That's fine. We can be friends as long as you like. They must be getting on pretty well by now. A few more brandies. A bit more candlelight. All very romantic, eh, Dave? Yeah, yeah, all right. Give it a rest, George. They're not in bed yet. Not yet, mate, no. You for Slayer? Yes, mate. I think this door's better, Nick. Hey? Don't look now, but there's an obbo in the pub. I can see Rod Skeese and his mates. Do you think they're watching us? I do. And I think we should give them something worth watching, don't you? Put your arms around me. Sorry? Just do it. Debbie, Debbie, look. We still are just friends, aren't we? Yeah, but that's not what they're going to be saying tomorrow. <laughs> Definitely tongues involved. <laughs> yeah, no question. Well, I reckon that's the score you owe me, Dave. Hold on, hold on, that was just snogging. Oh, yeah, but we all know what's going to happen now, don't we, eh? No, I, I want evidence before I pay up. Yeah. All right, all right, we'll listen outside their door, OK? Get that down your neck, I'll call a cab. Well, well, come on, let's just knock this on their head. Nothing is going to happen between Slater and Debbie Keane, I guarantee it. And how do you know? Because a woman is a tease, George. So let's just sit down, relax and have a drink. Nothing is going to happen. As soon as they tell Reg, it'll be all around the division. All around the Met. Oh, Lord, there goes my reputation. What reputation? Eh? <laughs> eh? It's been fun, isn't it? What, tonight? No, I mean being at Sun Hill together. I'm really going to miss you. Shh. Hate goodbyes. What about good nights? Not too keen on them either. Well, you know there's only one way to stop me from saying goodnight. If you're trying to get me into bed, Nick, you're wasting your time. I'm only susceptible when I'm drunk. But you are drunk. Oh, yeah. So I am. <laughs>